Hi everybody, Dan Stolbarger here. Week of February 6th, time for the Middle East update and some other updates as well. Uh, just a reminder before we jump in, lots of materials today. So make sure you click on that PDF PowerPoint link so that you can get everything that we have to offer. I'm going to try to squeeze as much as I can into around 10 minutes. So let's take a look at our news bites this week. The Trump peace plan um, obviously has gotten a lot of different reactions. Russia has come out against the plan, stating that it contradicts the UN decisions. Um, no big surprise here, but Muhammad Abbas, uh, his response to the deal of the century is what? A thousand times no. But what we're picking up from uh, Fatah amongst the Palestinians is that uh, his political career may be coming to an end. And so the age old question is going to be who is going to replace Abbas? Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in this week's presentation. Um, the top PA official threatens by saying whoever accepts the Trump peace plan, the filth of the century will pay the price of treason. Uh, the PA officials are encouraging martyrdom. Uh, we'll talk about intifadas and things such as that, the escalation of violence in and amongst the Palestinians in Israel. The quote is, better to fight and die as a martyr than to accept Trump's deal. We welcome death for Allah. That sounds like a peace partner to me. What do you think? Um, in light of all that, 12 Israeli soldiers were just wounded in a car ram ramming attack overnight in Jerusalem. And then one last thing for news bites, ISIS. We've talked a lot about the threats to Israel. Obviously, we talk about Hezbollah in the north on the Lebanese border. We talk about uh, Iran infiltrating the borders of the Golan in Syria. We talk about Hamas, of course, in Gaza. And now it appears that ISIS is resurfacing again, becoming a threat in the Sinai. So again, something that we'll have to keep our eyes on. If you now scroll to the next uh, presentation or the next uh, link, not link, uh, page or whatever, you'll see the image that says, this is the PA's deal. And it shows a Fatah person that is basically with a, a kifa on, lying on the map of, quote, Palestine, filling everything up with the Palestinian presence from the Jordan River to the Med. This is the bottom line. Okay, it's never been about land. It's been about the existence of Israel. Never forget that. And now we've got what I call the unraveling. Um, Netanyahu met on Monday in Uganda to discuss normalizing Israeli-Sudanese diplomatic ties. In light of all of that, the response from the Palestinian people is that this is a stab in the back. It's a departure from the Arab Peace Initiative and once again, um, throwing shade on anything that has to do with um, an enlightenment approach of accepting and negotiating a relevant peace plan in this day. In fact, you'll notice that the Saudis have given advice concerning all of this, agreeing to stand with whatever decisions the Palestinians will make, but in light of that saying, you know, you better accept Trump's plan or you're going to regret it later. And so we'll have to wait and see again in all of this. As I mentioned with Abbas, the question is, is who's next? Um, again, officials are saying he won't be in office much longer. And um, it appears the front runner is uh, the intelligence chief, Major General Mahid Faraja. Most likely he will replace Abbas. Don't know if that's going to change anything, but it can't hurt. 
as well. Although our Israeli friends will pr probably say, better to deal with the devil you know than the devil you don't know. But we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Again, escalation of violence, more balloons. Palestinians in Gaza are now threatening to send balloons. Last week we talked about the soccer ball that was filled with explosives. And we, we know the incendiary devices as far as setting fires. And now balloons carrying tear gas uh, grenades into Israel. And in light of all this, the question is, is that, is this the beginning of the third intifada? During the last 12 hours, uh, we've had a car ramming. We've had a soldier that's injured. We've had a shooting near the West Bank. Um, and so the question is, is it going to escalate or is this sort of the day of rage and will it kind of die down? But in recent days, the Palestinian leaders have come out threatening violence in opposition to the U.S. peace plan that was launched last week. Um, and then in light of all of that, the Palestinians are talking about not cooperating with the U.S. or Israel in, in with security matters. In fact, with what just took place with the car rammings and the shooting attacks in the last 24 hours, the former head of Palestinian Authority Security Services, Taufik Tarari, uh, called on security services, quote, not to pursue any fighter. In other words, Tarari called for the Palestinian police not to notify Israel about terrorists, about their activities, or about acts that they're planning to commit. Uh, we mentioned the Saudis' advice. You can see that article. Red lines for Israel. Defense Minister Naftali Bennett held a working meeting with his U.S. counterparts in Washington, kind of requesting new weaponry to deal with uh, the, Iranian the Iranians that are trying to dig in on the uh, Syrian border. This is a red line. This is why there's a lot of these, quote, random or um, bombings that are taking place that that Israel kind of remains mum about, whether it's in Damascus or whatever. Israel's red line is to keep Iran from the border, digging in, as well as Iran transferring weaponry to Hezbollah, primarily the ability to take all their rockets and introduce a precision mechanism that make them much more deadly. Uh, wrapping up, Franklin Graham, you know, I don't know what's worse, the the unraveling in the U.S., what we just witnessed in terms of Pelosi and ripping up this and Trump refusing to shake hands and the Democrats sitting through the, everything uh, dealing with the State of the Union. I mean, we are in a mess. We're more divided today than any time in history. Um, who knows? what's next but this is going to be the upcoming election as you probably know is going to be a bloodbath both sides feel like they're right both feel like they're doing their best for the american people uh it is a mess we are unraveling but what about great britain um the great billy graham his son franklin graham do you realize that he has now been banned from England, quotes from Christians, bishops, reverends. Mr. Graham's rhetoric is repeatedly and unnecessarily inflammatory, and in my opinion, it represents a risk to the social cohesion of our city. In Scotland, uh, Franklin Graham's views, and many more like them, are not shared by all Christians, as Mr. Graham would like you to believe. And even more astonishing, they have banned him from having any sort of what we used to call crusades, what Billy Graham made, how God used that in an amazing way. Now the UK is saying no, no, and no. Well, we've mentioned the unraveling. We've mentioned the response to the peace plan of the Palestinians. And that is this week's update. So with that, God bless you. Remember, stand 
be a watchman on the wall, and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Shalom.